Hello and welcome. This video is designed to replace the first class of the PowerShell portion of the COMP 2101 Administrative Shell Scripting course for Georgian College for the summer 2019 semester. The in-class lesson has been canceled due to unexpected circumstances. So please review this video, try the exercises, and ensure that your Windows machine is ready to do the labs for the course. Today's activities will ensure that your Windows machine is ready to run PowerShell, that you know how to start PowerShell, how to get the appropriate access permissions for PowerShell, how to ensure you have a current version of PowerShell, how to access the help documents in PowerShell, and how to customize your environment so that as you create scripts, you can simply begin using them without having to play around with where they're located on your disk. All of the reference material for this class is either on or linked from the GitHub course website, where, which we have already been using for all of our bash material. You can access that website at the same location it has been in all semester, sonsorp.github.il slash capitals C-O-M-P 2101. The first portion of the course is on the first portion of the page and covers all of the bash lessons which we have now completed. We are done with bash. Moving past the bash section we encounter the PowerShell support materials. There are a set of PDF instructions and presentations. There are lab instructions, just like there were for Bash. And there are some sample scripts available. There is also an external resources section with some links to extra materials in case you find that the materials included with the course aren't sufficient for you to adequately learn the material we cover. Some people find different formats to be useful. Some of these links will take you to websites with other formats. There are some videos at the bottom of the page to do with the Bash scripting lessons. There is a video also from the PowerShell lessons. This was done in the previous semester covers specifically Lesson 4, which we, of course, are not at yet. But when we get to that section, you'll be able to use those videos. The, t the main links we're going to be interested in in this session are the Lab System Setup Instructions, which we'll go through very briefly first and then the PowerShell Overview Presentation and the Associated Lab Exercise, which counts for marks for the semester. The rest of the materials are in the process of being reviewed to ensure they are up to date for summer 2019 and will become available, the links will start working, as they are updated. Under Lab System Setup Instructions, we click on that link. My page is out of date. I will reload it. We have a very simple set of instructions. PowerShell that we are going to be learning in this course will be Windows PowerShell, specifically version 5.1 or above. So you'll need a Windows machine to run this on. There is a version of PowerShell that is available for other platforms called PowerShell Core. It starts with version 6.0 and goes up from there. We are not using that one in this course. Whenever we refer to PowerShell, we are referring to Windows PowerShell Major version number 5. These labs can be done on your host laptop, if it happens to be running Windows, which I would expect 
will be true for most students. For security reasons, which we'll cover in this particular lesson, you may decide to instead set up a Windows virtual machine under VMware or VirtualBox and do the labs there. The reason being, enabling the Windows PowerShell scripting capability on the machine does create the potential for some security compromises if you're not sure what you're doing. You may not wish to open that on your host laptop. If you open it only in a virtual machine, it will not affect your host laptop. The first thing that we're going to do, on the assumption you can create your own Windows virtual machine, is we will go ahead and set the machine uh, up to run Windows PowerShell far enough to get our version information. Now setting it up isn't really necessary. If you go to the command search window on the bottom left and you start typing in PowerShell, you'll see PowerShell comes up as a number of choices. If your machine also happens to have PowerShell Core version 6 on it, you'll see that one in the list as well. For our purposes, the app that we wish to begin is the one that's simply called Windows PowerShell. If you click on it, it will start the window and you'll get a prompt and a PowerShell window. And of course, in the taskbar, you'll see an icon for PowerShell. By default, your machine will not have an icon for Windows PowerShell in the taskbar. If you wish that icon to stay so that you don't have to type in PowerShell to start PowerShell, simply right click on the icon for the running PowerShell process and from the menu choose to pin it to the taskbar. If you ever wish to take it off the taskbar, you simply choose unpin. I have mine pinned to make it simple to start it without typing in PowerShell. 